Good morning. I'm Glenna Milberg. Welcome to a little bit shorter version of this week in South Florida. We will keep an eye on the weather for you, no doubt. Uh, meanwhile, South Florida may or may not be the corruption capital of the United States, but you know we have to be in the running. And this week, this month, this year, we've covered countless cases of government officials under scrutiny for potential wrongdoing. Lawsuits and criminal charges involving people you elected to serve who are using their positions for other self-serving purposes. So it was a bit of a bombshell that dropped at the state capitol late this week when an amendment was dropped into an ethics bill that would gut the ability for ethics investigators to do some of their work. That bill then passed the Senate with no opposition. Did anyone focus on that last page of the bill, line 415? Well, your local ethics investigators did, and they are here with us today. Jose Arojo is the executive director of the Miami-Dade Commission on Ethics. Jody Brees is the Broward County Inspector General. Nelson Bellido is one of the longest serving board members on the Miami-Dade Commission on Ethics. And it is great to have you all here uh, talking about this because I know you're not, ethics investigations are not a very public thing. So I, I wanted to just kind of talk about this, this bill that's going through. Jose, let me start with you. There, there is just this amendment that popped up on a bill that's been going through the process two months or so. And what caught your attention about this one amendment that would really take away the ability for your office to start an investigation? So the, the amendment uh, was essentially brought up, uh, you know, right before the floor vote in the Senate. And so um, my agency and my counterparts and all over the state in Jacksonville and Broward County and Palm Beach um, so it was really bought, b brought to our attention by, by you know, county uh, lobbyists who are, you know, who are watching the proceedings up there, and we were spectacularly surprised uh, by the amendment. Uh, surprised, and, and I know you sort of got the news in Broward the same way. Well, practically speaking, take us through what, what does that matter? Because ethics investigations start in a variety of ways, complaints, et cetera. What, why does that matter? So. Um, it, this particular bill uh, would require individuals to file written sworn complaints identifying themselves and stating that they have personal knowledge of the facts underlying their complaint. And this would be the only way that a local commission could investigate an ethics violation. To give some context for you, my office, we don't do that much in terms of ethics, or I should say ethics is a small part of what we do. Um, about 450 tips and complaints were filed in my office last year. About 17 of them were ethics related. Of those 17, only one was filed as a complaint where it was written, sworn to, identified the individual, and was based on personal knowledge. How did, how did the rest of them come in? Phone calls, tips, anonymous? Correct, kind of thing. correct. And some of, the, some of that is also self-initiated. This bill, most importantly, would prohibit any ethics commission or local enforcement agency doing ethics cases from self-initiating. That means that this process is the only process by which an ethics violation could be uh, could be investigated. For example, there could be, uh, if a law enforcement officer were to come into our office and present the case, if they didn't have personal knowledge, we couldn't investigate the case. If we saw a local media report um, and we thought it would potentially be a violation, we could not follow up. If we found something as we were, pro uh, as we were investigating a valid, or not valid, but a, a complaint, and we found some other violation, we couldn't do anything about it. So this, in, in the center of South Florida, where I, literally just as a news reporter, I can, Nelson, name probably 10 or 12 public officials currently under some sort of scrutiny. Give me the big picture, and I don't want to pick on anybody, but give me the big picture of would these people walk? Glenna, that's just the point eclipse the wings of the local commissions. W would, th and would they walk? They could. It depends on circumstance. But as, as this bill has been proposed now, it does, because it requires there to be personal knowledge. Let me give you just a quick example. Years ago, a Miami City Commissioner, who will not be named, got pulled over by a police officer. He called the police chief. 
he got a warning. Most citizens and those viewers that are watching today, they wouldn't receive that benefit. He got a warning. There was an investigation by the Commission on Ethics. That individual, eventually there was a complaint filed. That individual ended up agreeing to that complaint. He got fined. It's an embarrassment. That's what the commission does in large part. It tries to keep the public trust. But if this bill were to pass, you couldn't have that. Another good example. Hey, can I just sure. address one thing you're saying? Mm -hmm. Why won't you name this person if this has turned, uh, we don't talk about allegations and assent until proven guilty, but to your point, this person just admitted to it. Why not name him? Well, again, I, I'm not here to throw anyone under the bus. But it, it, it's readily, you could, you could Google it, it and you could find out. Trust. Sure. Yeah. It, it does, and, and another example is the airport security. Many county officials were bypassing security, getting in front of everyone when they were going on personal trips with their families. That came to us as an anonymous tip. We were able to curtail that action that was taking place by county officials. Those are the kind of investigations that the local commission, our wings would be clipped. We wouldn't be able to do them. The police officer is not going to come into the Ethics Commission and swear under oath that this occurred. That would be political suicide, right? It, it just it or, doesn't happen. Or employment suicide. Employment you suicide, I should be. You're absolutely right. An employee of this person. So, Jose, so um, the ethics chair, chair of the ethics com uh, committee on the floor, says uh, Danny Burgess is his name, called this bill, the, the point of this bill to be fair and efficient and balanced and statewide make every every municipality, every city, every county sort of even-handed. Is that, is that fair? So, so I, I, I can't speak to those provisions of the bill, um, the bulk of the bill, what the bill was supposed to be originally, which was to streamline or modify you know, the procedures that the State Ethics Commission uses. I mean, if, there, there may be very, very good reasons for that, and I suspect that, uh, that, the, that that bill was offered in good faith. But what it does for us here locally, though, is it completely um, flies in the face of what we've been trying to do for 25 or 30 years, yeah. which is what, what, my, what my commissioner was, was talking about and what Ms. Priest was talking about, and that is um, we can't investigate hard stop unless there's a sworn complaint. So we have spent 30 years asking uh, the general public, asking law enforcement, asking the media, asking anyone who has any evidence of ethical misconduct, please refer it to us. We'll serve as a clearinghouse. Uh, many times, one of the things that we do a lot of times is we'll start the ethics investigation ourselves, and then at some point along the way, it looks like it's criminal, and we'll refer it criminally. The the amendment to this bill will completely prevent us from doing that. So we couldn't investigate anything unless there's a sworn a sworn complaint attached to it. Um, and so, again, I don't it, it, the the provisions that apply to the state ethics commission may, they, they may be a very good idea, right? Uh, a lot of those provisions already exist in our local ordinance. Our, our sworn complaints have to be based on personal knowledge, right? But but what what it really does is it it completely eviscerates any local investigative authority absent a sworn complaint by a local enforcement agency. And can I just add, oh, we, have, we have very seasoned investigators, many of them that wore the badge. So we're not talking about being and politically some motivated. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So we're talking about trained staff. Mm -hmm. We don't have political agendas at the Ethics Commission, certainly not in the Miami Dade Commission on Ethics and Public Trust. Do you think this is a political agenda? Do I personally think you it's a political the door agenda? To that question, right? Well, that, <laughs> thanks, Glenda. Thanks for putting me on the spot. Um, do I think it's a political agenda? I think the way politics is now, Glenda, everything has become a political agenda, right? People but what are, would are that constantly. Be? So, what do I feel here? I just feel my my ask of whether it's Senator Burgess or the other legislators is, come to the Ethics Commission. Come on February thirteenth. Talk to us, talk to the commissioners. We have Commissioner Gord is a perfect example, a former city of Miami commissioner who sits on the Ethics Commission, somebody who is impeccable and somebody who calls balls and strikes, just like the rest of my yeah. fellow commissioners. That's what we have, and I invite them to come and learn about it. I think that this was rushed. I, I feel that there hasn't been enough of an education that has been provided by the legislators about our local commissions, Let whether me, it be um, Broward or whether it be Dane. We're, uh, we're operating on a shortened timeline here, so let's take a, a quick break and we will be right back. Stay tuned.